In this video, I'm going to show you guys 10 hidden features that you might already know about in PowerPoint. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as you can see here on my screen, we're going to start off with the first hidden feature, which is painter tool with transparency. So what I mean by this is let's say you're clicking on these images and you want to change their transparency. Okay, simple enough. We can click on this image, right click, and then go to format picture, and then go over here to the right, and then transparency and decrease the transparency. Great, easy enough. But let's say we want to decrease the transparency for all of these images. Well, if I selected this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then try to do transparency, it's not going to let me do this transparency. Even if I select off of this one, it's still not going to let me change the transparency because it only allows you to affect the transparency for one image at a time. Well, you and I both know that we don't have time to waste with going into each one and changing transparencies. Ain't nobody got time for that. So here's a trick on how to fix that problem. If you already have one image with the correct transparency that you would like for that image to be, you can then click on that image, double click on Format Painter Tool, and then you can select each one of these with Breeze, and that's gonna quickly add a transparency to all of those images. All right, so moving on to the second hidden feature I wanna show you guys, which is changing casing for letters. So most of you guys probably already know about text boxes and writing in text, but let's say you wanna alter that text to be all uppercase, all lowercase, whatever it may be in terms of the styling of that text, you can highlight all this text, go up here to change case, click on the drop down arrow, and now you're gonna have a bunch of different options here to have it either all lowercase, all uppercase, capitalize each word, toggle case, or even a sentence case. So this is a super efficient method without you having to retype sentences and changing the format of your sentences in PowerPoint. All right, so moving on to the third hidden feature within PowerPoint. So here we have morphing shapes. So there's actually going to be two slides here. We want to morph this circle to be this triangle right here. Well, there's a slight problem with trying to do this because if I go into presentation mode, and mind you, I do have a transition of morph for this second slide. So if I were to morph, it should work. But watch this. If I go in here in presentation mode, and then I go to the next slide, it's going to disappear and then reappear as that triangle. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to actually have this circle move in this direction and morph into that actual triangle shape. So this is how you can achieve it. If you go up here to format and then you go here to selection pane, you then can rename this shape to be whatever name you want it to be. But you gotta make sure that you add two exclamation points in front of it and then name it whatever you want it to be. So in this case, we're gonna do two exclamation points and we'll say morph. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna change the name of this shape to be the same name as that previous one with the two exclamation points in front of it. So now what we can do is if we go back into presentation mode and we go from the first slide to the next, it morphs it into that new shape without disappearing and then reappearing on the next slide. So this is a really fun hack if you want to really wow your audience with very unique animations. Just remember that you have to rename both the shapes to be the same name in the selection pane. So moving on to the next hidden feature in PowerPoint, which is expand windows. Some people may already know about this, but I feel like a lot of people don't. And here's what I mean by this. You have all these different settings here, even in slides, font, paragraph, drawing, editing, voice. But here's one thing that people don't seem to utilize that much, which are these expand window icons right here for each one of these sections. So you're not gonna have expand windows for all sections, but there are for a couple like clipboard and font and paragraph. So you're gonna wanna use those expand windows because it's gonna allow you to have even more settings available to you that might not already be showing right here. Now, some of them might be duplicates, but there's also a couple of features that are slightly hidden unless you use the expand windows feature. So make sure to click on these expand windows to see the full capabilities that PowerPoint is offering to you in each one of these sections. Moving on to our next hidden feature which is clipboard history. So right here you see your clipboard section. Now what most people don't know about is if you hit this expand window icon, 
it's actually going to show you your entire clipboard history. So let's say you were copying a bunch of these images that were up here and you wanted to paste them in again on this slide. Well, you can easily do that if you just select each one of these images, it's then going to paste in those images for you. And not only that, it's going to paste it in an exact location where you copied it from. So it's gonna be nice and organized and nice and clean. You can also do paste all, and that way it's gonna paste everything that you've ever copied in your PowerPoint presentation, which is really cool. Another thing is, is let's say you want to clear out your clipboard history so that when you're copying future things and you wanna paste them in, you only paste in those items. You could always say clear all right here. And then essentially what that does is just clear out your clipboard history. So moving on to the next hidden feature, which is increasing your undo limits. So I actually did a complete separate video on how to do this right here. But I'm gonna show you guys real quick about this hidden feature just because I feel like a lot of people should know about this. So let's say you're going in here and you're wanting to add in a shape and then you move it around and you're doing all this and then you want to undo it a couple of times because you're trying to go back. A lot of times people run into the issue where they only can go back so many times. Like let's say 10 times is usually the average amount that people can go back in PowerPoint. Well, what most people don't know is that you can actually go back about 150 times in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna show you guys how to exactly do that. So if you go up here to file, and then you go here to options, and then you go here to advance, there's gonna be this section called maximum number of undos. It's gonna show maybe 10, 15, 20, whatever it may be the default for PowerPoint. Well, the maximum amount you can actually choose is 150. I wish you could go higher than this, but 150 is the max, and trust me, this is going to be a lifesaver for you, especially if you're wanting to go really far back in your PowerPoint presentation, if for some odd reason you've just made a catastrophic mistake in your presentation. So make sure to change those settings, and then all you have to do is hit OK, and now you're gonna be able to go back over 150 times from this point forward. The next hidden feature I wanna show you guys is actually dealing with the slide master. So, a lot of times when people are building out slides, I'll see them put their background image just straight on their slide. And then what they'll do is they'll start adding in more things, like maybe they'll add in a shape and they'll type some sample text here. And then maybe they want to add another shape, another shape. And then maybe they're like trying to move things around, but then they accidentally move their background. And this can get extremely frustrating if you're always having to readjust your background back to where it originally was. To avoid this issue, what I recommend is copying whatever your background image is, or even if it's just a solid color, copy it, and then go up here to View, Slide Master, paste it in, and make sure it's sent to back, close Master View, and now here's the beautiful thing. We can delete this image right here, and then I'm just gonna delete this box right here. And now, if I try to actually select this background, it's not gonna let me. It's only going to select the objects that are actually on my slide and not the background image, which is amazing. Now, if you are wanting to have different background images for different slides, you will need to make a duplicate and then change the background of your image. So if you went back here to Slide Master, and then you went here, right-clicked, and did duplicate layout, you then can change this image out for a different image. And then if you close it, so we'll just shift this over a little bit. And let's say you duplicate this and now you want that second layout. You can right click here, layout, and then you can choose that new layout for your PowerPoint presentation. Obviously, you probably wouldn't have your image off to the right like that, but just to demonstrate clearly on how this works, this is something you could do. All right, so moving on to the next hidden feature. So this is using W and B in presentation mode. So let's say you're presenting your screen and you're going to the next slide and then the next one. Well, let's say you need to pause your presentation because someone had a question and you don't want things on the slide to be distracting. Well, if you hit the W key, it's then going to make your entire screen white. I'm sure you've guessed it, but if you hit the B key, it's actually going to make your entire screen black. So if you wanna go back to it, all you have to do is hit that same letter again, and it's gonna go back to your original slide. Same rule applies when you're hitting W. You just have to hit it two times to go back, once to make it white, 
and once for the B key to make it black and twice to go back. All right, and then you can just exit out of it. And that is how you can get back to your PowerPoint presentation, edit your presentation. All right, so moving on to the next hidden feature. So right here we have using numbers in presentation mode. So kind of similar to using the W and B key, but it's a different kind of hack when presenting. So let's say you're going through your slides and all of a sudden someone stops you and they're like, hey, can we go back to slide one or slide two? I wanna do that real quick. Well, sometimes what people have to do is they'll have to exit out, slide all the way up here. They're seeing your entire presentation. It's kind of unprofessional. You click on that and then you go back into presentation mode. Well, what if we don't wanna to have to do that? What if we just wanna be able to go to that exact slide without having to exit presentation mode? Well, here's what you can do. Type in the number if you know what number slide it is. So let's say I wanna go to slide six. I'm gonna hit six. And then if you hit enter, it's going to jump you to that slide that you want to present. So if someone says, hey, can we go back to slide one? You hit one, enter. And now you're going to go back to slide one with ease and you don't have to exit outside of your presentations. All right, so moving on to the next hidden feature, which is text options. So a lot of times people might know about this and this even might be a hidden feature for some people, but let's say you're adding a shape. You want to change the styling of the shape. So you right click format shape, and then you're going to add in all your different shape effects here. You know, maybe add in a different color. Great. Well, what if we want to add the same type of effects to text? Well, you can go up here, highlight your text. And then as long as you still have this format shape pane open, and if you don't have it open, you can always right click and then go to format shape to open it. There's gonna be a feature called text options. So if you click on text options, this then allows you to alter the coloring of your text and you can add really cool shadows. And then maybe if you wanna have a reflection. So this is just a really cool way to really manipulate how the styling of your text is gonna look like. Not only that, but you could even add like a text outline if you want. So if you want to have a solid outline of maybe orange, you could do that. Now, does this text look pretty? No, but I want to show you guys that there are text options available to you in addition to what shape options provide for you. All right, so those are my top 10 hidden features I wanted to show you guys in PowerPoint. If you guys did find this helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you could subscribe, I greatly appreciate the support. Also, if you are interested in learning all things related to PowerPoint, I do have a course on Udemy, so I'll have a link to that in the description below. But without further ado, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you guys in future videos. Thanks.